I'm Melanie Johnson, along with my co-host, Jen Foster. We are both 13-time best-selling authors. We've published over 2,500 books and made all of our authors number one bestsellers. We own Elite Online Publishing. If you want to become a best-selling author, look us up at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Now, welcome to the podcast that shares secrets from top industry experts that show you how to get lasting success and results. This is the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hey everyone, it's Jen Foster here with Elite Expert Insider. We are super excited to interview Harrison Fisher today. And my business partner, Melanie Johnson, isn't here today, but we're gonna just have a great time today and talk to Harrison. Now, Harrison is actually a serial entrepreneur. He's an international speaker, speaker and world traveler, and he's an expert at making things easy, actionable, and fun. So really, we are really excited to talk to him. He has so much to tell us about health and wellness and business leadership. So welcome. <laughs> yeah, that, that bio was as painful as I thought it would be. <laughs> you didn't even go through the whole thing. Thank I didn't. You for sparing me. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured, you know, you could tell us kind of where you came from and how you became a serial entrepreneur, how you got on TEDx and all these awesome things. Like you can kind of just give us a little background about yourself. Oh, of course. Um, I like that the bio, it's like international speaker and world traveler. Right now, <laughs> definitely not either of those. Um, but uh, as for business and TEDx, um, really just persistence. Um, I think that the number one thing you need to have as a human, as an entrepreneur, like it only takes one thing to be successful. Um, you could break that one thing down into several different categories. Uh, but my belief is if you have an insatiable desire to learn, you could be successful in any industry, in any niche that you want to work in. Um, and that's just something that I've built for myself. And I say I've built for myself because we're not really born with that. I mean, as kids, we have this amazing childlike curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, but as we grow older, you know, we stop getting passionate about things. Um, things get in the way. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I was this like superstar soccer goalie. I was really amazing. Um, and as I grew up, um, even though I was so talented, I just kind of got bored with soccer and I stopped playing. And um, my backup goalie ended up getting a scholarship to Brown wow. while I didn't get a scholarship to right. college. So, um, you know, when we become teenagers and, you know, young adults, we start losing interest in things. And it's about adopting that childlike curiosity um, for everything. Like, I just love to learn anything. And that makes me so um, – it, it – positions me really well as an entrepreneur because any kind of task at hand, um, I can know nothing, but I'm going to learn really quickly and I'm going to figure it out and we're going to build a business through that. Yeah. That passion and that determination really can, you can do anything on any niche. Right. Exactly. So, you know, one thing I, you know, I said that one thing uh, helps you become a great entrepreneur in any industry. Uh, and you mentioned uh, determination. So if you have an insatiable desire to learn, um, that creates determination, right? You know, uh, the opposite of determination is giving up. And, um, you know, if you're faced with a business challenge and you feel like giving up, if you focus on just wanting to learn, just wanting to know new things, just trying to understand um, which is a really fun state to be in, you'll never give up because there's no failing. Like no matter what you learn, right? If you, right. Um, you know, are trying to build a new product and you don't end up building the new product, well, you learned a million things about developing products. Um, and if you're focused on learning, uh, Tom Bilyeu, um, he talks about this a lot, which is, you know, I think he's really good at talking about this, but he talks about, um, Building your self-worth based on um, not outcomes, but figuring things out, right? So right. instead of 
you know, your confidence coming from, you know, if you can reach a million dollars in sales, build your confidence on, you're going to learn uh, more than anyone else on how to build a million dollars in sales. And that's really the route to confidence and success as an entrepreneur. Right. So it's not really about the destination or the actual goal, but it's about the journey getting there. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I watched a, a TED talk. You mentioned TED talks earlier. Um, there was a, a, a recovering addict. I can't remember his name. I watched this a while ago. Um, but he says there were three things that, you know, he learned as an addict to build, you know, a hundred million dollar company. It was three principles. I can't remember all three principles, but um, principle number two was, okay, so one principle was work really hard. He said it way more eloquently. I just don't remember what he said. Yeah. <laughs> principle number two is detach from outcomes. Uh, when you're mm. really focused on outcomes, what you um, when you're really focused on outcomes, they don't happen. Um, mm -hmm. So as a as a as a business owner, um, we're we're tracking sales. Obviously, we're tracking customers. We're tracking profits. We're tracking all these things, of course. Uh, but what we're really tracking is activities. You know, mm -hmm. how many different you know ad creatives did we try? How many different landing pages did we try? How many people mm -hmm. have we reached out to? You know, how many trials have we had? with new food products. We're tracking activities because activities lead to success. And when you focus on activities, it's just way more fun than focusing on, you know, because all of these different things, you know, like R and D, it's impossible to predict when you're going to figure out the secrets to your product. Right. Um, but it's easy to predict um, if you do, you know, three trials every single day, you're going to eventually get there. Um, so detaching from outcomes is really important. Focusing on the journey. Um, you know, I read uh, David Diaz, David, David Dita's book or Dita's, I don't know how to pronounce the name, the way of the superior man recently. And uh, one thing he says, and this is, you know, the way of the superior man is not just about man. It's about right. masculine energy, but it, everyone has masculine energy. Yeah. Applies to everyone. He talks about um, how life is, how it always will be. Um, so a lot of people they get into a right the relationship and they're like, when you know he or she is like this, it's gonna be amazing. Um, yeah. You know, when my business is at this, it's gonna be amazing. You know, when I get a college degree and a great job, my life is gonna be amazing. And the reality is, life will always be as it is. Um, you always have the same stress. You'll always have the same emotions. You'll always have the same lack of certainty. And so if you focus on, you know, the now and creating a high quality of life now, a high um, excitement for your business now, um, that's what really leads to success. Yeah. It's really, you know, it's, it's kind of like we do that from the beginning, right? When we're, when we're kids, we're like, oh, if only I was this height or if only I was this age, then I can do this. And when I, when I get graduate high school, then I'm going to have this, or it's going to be amazing. Like you're saying, but right. focusing on the now, I think, I think, especially right now, I'm, I'm going to kind of date this, but you know, in the times of COVID, everyone's just sitting around in their homes and staying at home. It's like, oh, and only when this is over, then everything will be amazing. It's, it's no, it's like refocusing and saying, okay, well, this is what it is now. And this is how it's going to be. And we don't know if it's going to, ever change it might always be like this so how can we make this amazing right how can we learn from right. this and grow from this and enjoy the time that we have at home exactly life will always be as it is now i just find that line so powerful mm -hmm. um but to talk about covid i've never had more fun in my life yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. i feel like slightly guilty saying that uh, because I understand there's a lot of suffering out there. You know, a lot of people have lost their jobs and their income. And, you know, um, when you can't deal with your own thoughts, um, being stuck at home is really hard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, domestic abuse is up. Um, mm -hmm. I really don't want to make this that negative, but there is, there is suffering. And, um, you know, what's interesting is um, suffering is kind of a blessing not just for the ways that most people think we're like, oh, all opportunities or all obstacles are 
um, opportunities for growth, which mm -hmm. is so true. I mean, yeah. you know, I, 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 I try not to say this, but I find myself saying like, you know, I wish I was challenged more because I, I really don't want that. But <laughs> I understand right. that when but you're you challenged, you, you really grow. have the growth. Yeah. Uh, but suffering. So for for human beings, um, we really need a purpose. It's it's really important to us. It's in the top of Maslow's hierarchy pyramid. Um, purpose is what gives life meaning and makes it fulfilling. Um, and if there was no suffering in the world, there wouldn't really be anything to do. Um, so you know, when when you face suffering, it's like you really feel for people. Um, but we're on the planet to feel for people. So it's kind of a, it's a catch 22. It's like, mm -hmm. you don't want to see suffering, but it also gives you a reason to live, to help others, to contribute. Yeah. Um, so I think we're really blessed with this COVID time. You know, people have really gotten the opportunity to assess their routines, which is huge. Um, <laughs> I built a new morning routine. It takes me 24 hours to do there you go. <laughs> Just because I'm focused. Uh, well, it's interesting, right? There are nine different areas of life or 12 or eight or six, however many you believe in, you know, relationships, emotion, finance, business, spirituality, which has been really huge for me during COVID. And one day I was like, you know, why does my morning routine just get me into state and get me healthy? Like, why doesn't it, why don't I make improvements into all nine areas of my life every single day? right? Life is always how it is now. Why don't I improve all nine areas every now that I live in? Right. Um, COVID has allowed people to really evaluate what they're doing and if they're like passionate about what they're doing. Um, I think a lot of people are really, at least um, in the beginning of COVID, there was a huge movement of people thinking about what they were doing and if they were helping others or were they making a difference in the world? Mm -hmm. um, and to me, I would call that conscious leadership, which um, is a way to lead and, and run a business, which is one, extremely fulfilling and fun and exciting and awesome um, and um, lucrative. And two, really needs to be more prevalent in the world. It's, it's part of my mission. So I run a company, it's called Kula. Um, and it was birthed out of, uh, I had a struggle or I still struggle every day with a food addiction, which, you know, many people don't really believe in. Um, but the reality is there's, you know, somewhere between 70 and 100 million Americans that are addicted to food and they know it, um, but they don't use the word food addict. They use the word keto and, and low carb and South Beach and Atkins. Um, mm -hmm. These are their language because they don't have this word yet. And that's part of my mission is to spread awareness mm -hmm. and education for recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other part of my uh, mission is to really inspire conscious leadership. And we're gonna build a community I, I don't know why this is sounding like a pitch. I didn't mean it like that. It's just <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Yeah. So you're building a community. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be building a community. I'm not 100 percent sure what it yeah. looks like, uh, but we're really going to try to inspire conscious leadership. And to me, conscious leadership, um, it's just so it's similar to, to to consciousness in real life. It's you know a lot of us in you know business is a funny thing. Um, you know, for example behind all businesses are passionate, caring people. And, um, you know, when customers interact with businesses, they have no idea. Um, you know, I, people, I get some really, you know, mean comments sometimes on, on my business, um, like on our advertisements and, mm -hmm. and it hurts, right? Cause this mm -hmm. is, this is me. Um, and when I respond, people completely change their entire point of view because they forget that there's a human behind the business. Right. Um, and which is beautiful, right? Because they they would never treat a human the way they treat a business, especially right. since now they understand how much that I actually care about them and how much 
were doing to actually change their life. They don't, they yeah. don't necessarily see that. Right. Um, the point I'm making is business owners do the same thing. They forget that there's a customer on the other side of their marketing, of their sales, of their operations, of their manufacturing, of their service, their, their product, their offering. And, you know, sometimes they make these decisions where if there was a customer in the room, they would never make these decisions. Like right. who would sit there, look at someone in the eyes and be like, here, eat my bag of chemical junk that's going to poison your body and really destroy your life. Like no one would do that right. until you put that like facade of a wall that is a business. So mm -hmm. to me, conscious leadership is just remembering there's a person on the other side of your business that your job is to make their life better. That's literally what business is, is yeah. making someone's life better. And if you consider that in all the decisions you make, like how would this really affect my customer? From my customer's point of view, if I was my customer and this company did this, would this upset me or would it make me happy? And so all of my decisions are what's best for the customer or it doesn't have to be what's best for the customer. Sometimes, you know, you need to do what's best for the business, right? Because if, if my business doesn't succeed, the customer, you know, will suffer. They won't like get if the value. I give my product away for free, my, I'll go out of business and then my customer will be stuck eating all of this, you know, processed addictive junk food versus my product that will help them take control of their health and their eating and get a freedom from food. Right. Um, so, so, okay. So what I was saying is uh, even if you're doing something at the behest of your customer, that's better for your business, put yourself in their shoes. Would they understand why you're doing it? Like, do they understand? Like, does that make sense to them? You know, for mm -hmm. example, um, our food is, is not that cheap. You know, um, you know, we're more expensive than, you know, the other brands out there that, mm -hmm. you know, sell a product that looks like ours and tastes like ours and feels like ours, but isn't really ours. And, you know, we, we do that because people will pay for it, right? Yeah. We are offering something life changing. People yeah. are going to pay for something that's life changing. Well, and it um, sounds like it's a healthy product. It's not something that, like you said, you're making sure what goes into your product is quality and not something like full of chemicals, right? Right. So that conscious, I really liked what you were saying about, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'm a leadership, you know, I, I just focus on leadership and I lead other people, but you have this other word attached to leadership, which I really like, the conscious leadership and yeah. really, really putting yourself in that state of mind of really understanding and knowing how you're doing, how you're leading. Right. I think that's really awesome. Yeah. There's actually two words that I use attached to leadership. So conscious leadership is one. That's how I, you know, use, make a lot of my decisions is by thinking about, you know, what would my customer think of the decision or what would my employees think or what would my stakeholders think? It's not just about customers. There's all these different people in business, which is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, going back to my talk about, you know, the one thing that, you know, makes you successful in any industry, your insatiable desire to learn. One A would be an insatiable desire to learn about what makes people tick. Cause that makes you be able to understand you and function. It makes you understand your employees and help them be their best selves. It helps you understand your customers and your investors and all these different things. But that's just a side note. Yeah. Um, the second word that I attach to leadership is transformational. So transformational leadership. Uh, a lot of people get into business and they're like, Oh, um, you know, this product, it, you know, it has 20 grams of carbs. You know, people don't like carbs. I'm going to come out with a product with 10 grams of carbs and I'm going to make their life better. And that is a way to build a business. And there are many successful businesses like that. Um, for me, the only business that I want to build 
is a business that is going to transform your life. I don't want to make your life better. I want to make your life different. Every time someone comes to my company and they purchase snacks, they're making a commitment that they're going to have a freedom from food, that they're going to transform their entire life, their entire health. That's what it means to do business with us. Um, it's because of how we built our products, um, you know, only using ingredients that the human body recognizes, which is really important um, with addiction. You know, mm -hmm. the reason why alcohol is addictive is because um, alcohol is not an, an essential nutrient to the body. So the body never built up a way to um, sort of curb your addiction. So if you think about water, um, you know, in this research that I'm, I'm just starting to get into, um, but it's, you know, based, it's what our company is built off. Um, mm -hmm. But if you think about water, um, like, have you ever drank too much water? Like, have you ever gotten water toxicity? Like, you can't drink, you can drink too much water, but your body is going to fight you. Your yeah. body is like, anytime you have enough water, your body's like, that's enough. Stop. We don't want any more. And then you like, it's really hard to drink water. It takes a lot of willpower. With alcohol, because it's not an essential nutrient, our bodies don't have that same mechanism. Our bodies don't have that thing where it's like, okay, it's enough. I mean, some people have built like a great, you know, way to be like, oh, I'll have four drinks and then I'll be good. But there's no like um, biochemistry in our body outside of habit that really stops us from drinking. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so many foods out there that are built with isolates and extracts and chemicals and sugars and you know, all these other um, ingredients that aren't essential to the body and therefore our body has no way to regulate it. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the cause of this addiction to food. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, transformational leadership. Yeah, okay. You got um, it. <laughs> yeah. So in the product, uh, but it's not just the product. Like we can't just give you the product and be like, okay, we created a, a, a non-addictive binge sensitive product eat it and you'll be good. No, you know, we have my story on the back talking about my struggle with food addiction um, to have people relate. We have tips on our bags, like what you could do. Like if you feel you suffer from a food addiction or you feel like you need a, a health transformation, we have, we have tips on the bag. Um, we're going to add education to the website. Um, we'll, we'll probably have coaching someday. We're going to be there with you every step of the day so that when you buy a, a, a box of our snacks, your life is never going to be the same. Um, mm -hmm. And any business can do that, right? Um, I don't have any examples on me right now. I don't really do a lot of sleeping these days. Um, <laughs> hopefully after this week, I'll start sleeping again. Um, but if you want to be fulfilled and you want customers to love you, um, be a transformational leader. Figure out how can your business, every time a customer touches your business, how could you make sure that their life will never be the same? Yeah, just that consciousness and awareness of it. And it can be as simple as asking the question, asking them. That's awesome. Well, where, where can people go to find you? What, do you have a website for your food company? Yes. I do. I do. Um, it's very hard to spell. We're working on that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it's just so fun to say. It's yeah. actually, um, it's called Kula, right? I mentioned it a couple Kula. times. Mm -hmm. um, and what's really interesting about the name, Kula, it's, it's a made up word, uh, but it has roots in um, Afrikaans. It means low carb and there's no connection to why it's Afrikaans. It was just, um, we had a brand name and then we couldn't get the trademark while we were doing our branding. I had 24 hours to come up with a new name and desperately I typed all these words into Google and this is mm -hmm. something that sounded really nice. Uh, but what's really interesting is uh, because I discovered that I was a food addict, you know, a year or two after I started the company, um, Kula, it means low carb, which is what many food addicts you know, consider themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that the company 
you know, that was my language too, right? Like the whole company was born out of my addiction to food. I just didn't know I had it yet. And I yeah. called it the, the same language that most of the other people are using, low carb. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to find me, find us, find the products, you know what I'll do? Um, I will offer anyone who listens to the show um, a $30 off coupon for a okay. box, for their first box of snacks. Awesome. Um, you could you could find us at kula.com, k o o h l a h dot com. I hope you you know put it in the comments yeah. or something. Yeah, we'll so put it in our show it. notes, and we'll on YouTube we'll put it in the in the description. Yeah, but make sure um, I, I'm I'm like trying to to make this work, but it do, it doesn't work. But um, there's a there's an ooh and an ah like the food yeah. ooh Kula. this food is good ah like o o h and a h if you don't see the ooh and the ah you spell it wrong yeah. make sure there's an ooh and an ah I like that and if you want to connect with me uh, personally um, oh this is gonna be weird too you can follow me on Instagram uh, at Harrison Hunter Reed uh, I'll send her the links. Um, and I love answering DMs. So if you have any, you know, follow-up questions, I'll be there to help you. Um, or you could find me on LinkedIn, Harrison Hunter Reed Fisher CPFA, and I'll send uh, I'll send you the link as well, Jen. Sounds good. Well, we'll put those links in the show notes, and people can connect with you. And yeah, go get a thirty dollar off box of snacks. That sounds awesome. And I like Kula. And then when I eat it, I can say Ooh, ah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, I hope exactly. So. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Harrison, for being on our show. And um, for those of you who are listening, go ahead and, and reach out to us and subscribe to our podcast. And you can see the show notes or in the descriptions on YouTube to get those links. So thanks for being here, Harrison. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun with you. Yeah. Everyone have a great day. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility, and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.